that's a significant issue that you need to consider. So you get a big order from a customer, and, they, and you say, okay, yeah, we'll have it in 45 days. And they're like, are you kidding me right now? 45 days? They're not going to want to wait 45 days. When Walmart places an order, they're expecting it's going to be in their distribution center three days later. So there's trade-offs. So if you decide that you're going to go that route, then you need to make sure that your suppliers in China have insight into your production forecast. So they know that there's going to be demand. That they can see the demand that you're forecasting next month, the month after that, six months down the road. They know what the seasonality is for the product, so they know when to produce when to start producing the product. So location is an issue. In that case, you're literally thousands of miles away from your supplier. In other cases, it's very common actually for manufacturers and suppliers to be clustered together. So literally, down the road. We need to look at the layout of both our manufacturing facility. How is the manufacturing facility going to function? How is it going to be laid out? And what is the layout of our retail operation? Remember we talked about the flow of the, uh, of the store. That's something that operations managers need to solve. And they spend a lot of time, and it's very deliberate. deliberate. And we talked about IKEA is an example. You're, you're, going, you're in a maze there. You're not amazed. Well, you might be amazed, but after a while, the novelty wears off, right? It wears off pretty quickly. But take any shop, whether it's The Gap, Old Navy, whatever shop it is, the operations manager is, has designed a flow, which is the pattern that we follow in walking through the store so that there will be some impulse purchase. So you might go in there and plan to buy one thing, and then as you walk through the store, conveniently, right, the register is always in the back. So you have to walk from the front of the store to the back of the store, and on the way, you're exposed to all these other things. So you just wanted to get a blouse, which it's cool that they're all in the front there. And then as you walk to the register, you see a pair of slacks or a skirt. And by the time you get to the counter, there are the shades and the necklaces and the bangles, right? And the earrings. They think of everything. So the layout is an important part of operations management. Operations managers will often have influence on the design of the job, which means they'll decide what are the tasks that need to be completed in order to produce the product or provide the service. The operations manager is responsible for job design, which means that they're going to decide what are the tasks that somebody needs to complete to either produce the product or service. A job that has high satisfaction is one that has high skill variety, high task identity, high task significance, a high level of autonomy, and a high level of feedback. So if all those levels, if all those characteristics are high, then job satisfaction should also be high. <laughs> Skill variety, task identity, task significance, autonomy, and feedback. Those are five job characteristics that can achieve job satisfaction. 
skill variety, task identity, task significance, autonomy, and feedback. Skill variety means that we utilize a variety of skills to complete the task. Analytic skills and also creative skills, for example. Quantitative skills and qualitative skills. Interpersonal skills. So we use a variety of skills. Ideally, you don't want to just have tasks that only require you to use certain skills. Task identity means that you have this sense of accomplishment, that you complete all the parts, A through Z. So you have this sense of achievement. For most people, that's very rewarding. They don't want to just be responsible for a small piece of the puzzle. They want to start and finish the entire project, all the steps that need to be completed. which is different from job specialization, which says, for example, with the shoes, right? One person does the cutting of the leather. Another person punches the holes in the leather. Another person stitches the leather. Another person polishes. That's not providing task identity. Task identity would be, OK, I'm going to make a shoe now. I'm going to cut the leather, I'm going to punch the holes, I'm going to stitch it to the soles, I'm going to polish it, onto the next thing, right, onto the next pair of shoes. That's going to result in a, a high level of job satisfaction instead of, I'm punching holes today, right? How exciting. Job significance means that you feel that what you do is important, that it's meaningful, that you're contributing to the success of the organization. So ideally, the tasks are something that's going to allow you to realize your impact on the organization. So you don't think it's busy work, that it's meaningful. I always uh, tell my students, like a lot of students who um, work and also go to school, some of them work in retail, right? They might work at McDonald's, they, they work at KFC, they work at Radio Shack. You shouldn't be embarrassed to put that on your resume. Some students say, well, I worked at Burger King. Do you think I should put that on there? Yes, you should. Because you know what? That's, in many cases, more important than the responsibility of the president. Why do I say that? Because as the cashier in the store, you are front, you're, you're the primary source of contact with the customer. When does the president of the company see the customer? Right? You're a front line. So if you have a toot, they're going to shop someplace else. That's an illustration of our ability to have a significant impact on the business. Now, if we're very helpful and accommodating to the customer, then the customer will come back. And the sales of the company will grow. So customer service experience is, is very important. Autonomy refers to your ability to complete the tasks in general as you see fit. So you don't have somebody leaning over your shoulder telling you what to do and how to do it. Now that doesn't mean that the manager is not going to train you and develop you. Of course, the, the manager needs to train you. In fact, one of the reasons why employees don't do what they're supposed to is because they don't know 
how to do it, 